second. Nobody's rushing. Hey, Kevin. Yeah? I think you better come in here and see this. Nobody's here, but they left a note. A note? A note. Good morning. I went to the grocery store, so you're on your own for breakfast. P.S. There was a zombie apocalypse last night. P.P.S. Don't forget your history project is due today. Love, Mom. Dude, this is horrible. You, you know, we forgot the history, history project. project. Oh, man. What are we going to do, man? I got it enough. Ah, uh, zombies. Zombies. Uh, you better get geared up. Yeah. I can tell you facts all day about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. No, you can't. There's a zombie apocalypse going on. Well, normally I could tell you facts all day about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, but they wouldn't stick with you unless you knew the whys, unless you knew the story behind it. John Wilkes Booth. Most people know Booth loved the South and hated Lincoln, but really, that isn't enough of a reason to go out and kill him. And Booth was a well-known and famous actor, and in fact was called the handsomest man in America by some critics. Why would a man want to throw that away in a risky gambit to kill the president? Short answer was, he didn't. Like many zealous southerners, Booth would have gladly fought for the Confederacy. But he had sworn to his mother when war broke out that he would not enlist as a soldier, and Booth was a man of his word. Chafing, beginning to consider himself a coward as the war dragged on, Booth decided to do his part by kidnapping President Lincoln. In 1864, the rebel army was losing the Civil War, so Booth's plan was designed not only to send a message to the Union, but also to rally the Confederate troops. When Lincoln was re-elected on a platform advocating the 13th Amendment and the abolition of slavery, Booth redoubled his efforts. The group of conspirators Booth had assembled laid an ambush for the president in March 1865, but Lincoln changed his plans at the last minute and did not attend the play they expected him to. On April 12, 1865, Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse. Booth's kidnapping plan was now impractical. The goal could only be assassination. But Booth wouldn't do it alone. Most reliable historical sources agree that there were eight conspirators. The really important ones, the ones that you need to know despite the zombie apocalypse, were these three. The first, of course, was John Wilkes Booth himself. Everyone knows him because he was the mastermind, the brains behind the operation. And he also had the most important role. He was the one who would assassinate President Lincoln. <laughs> The second conspirator to know was George Atzerodt. His was to take out the second in command, Vice President Andrew Johnson. Unfortunately, Atzerodt was a well known coward. The third man with a non support role was Lewis Powell. He was to take out the third in line for the presidency, the Secretary of State Seward. The other five conspirators played support roles 
such as Mary Surratt, who ran the boarding house and kept weapons for Booth and the others. His plan in place, his team assembled, Booth had only to wait for the opportune moment, and Lincoln would be doomed. Just three days before his assassination, Lincoln told his biographer about a nightmare he had had, saying, I soon began to dream. There seemed to be a death-like stillness about me. Then I heard subdued sobs, as if a number of people were weeping. I thought I left my bed and wandered downstairs. There, the silence was broken by the same pitiful sobbing, but the mourners were invisible. I went from room to room. No living person was in sight, but the same mournful sounds of distress met me as I passed along. I saw light in all rooms. Every object was familiar to me, but where were all the people who were grieving as if their hearts would break? I was puzzled and alarmed. What could be the meaning of all of this? Determined to find the cause of a state of things so mysterious and so shocking, I kept on until I arrived at the East Room, which I entered. There I met with a sickening surprise. Before me was a catafalque, on which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments, and there was a throng of people gazing mournfully upon the corpse, whose face was covered, others weeping pitifully. Who is dead in the White House? I demanded of one of the soldiers. The President, was his answer. He was killed by an assassin. Then came a loud burst of grief from the crowd, which woke me from my dream. I slept no more that night, and although it was only a dream, I have been strangely annoyed by it ever since. That moment came on the morning of Good Friday, April 14th, 1865. When Booth was at Ford's Theater getting his mail, he learned that the President and Mrs. Lincoln would be attending the play Our American Cousin that evening. He immediately set the team in action, making plans for a getaway horse, an escape route, and informing Powell and Atzerodt of his intentions so that they would be in position. Now it was on. One. Tell me about it. I was way too close. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Oh man, whoa, whoa, how'd that one get in here? Did we get him? I think so. We forgot to check the back. 
<laughs> Always check the back. <sighs> Get in, come on, man, get in, get in, come on, right, let's go. Right. Oh, boy. Thanks to lift, guys. No problem. Holy crap, there's a freaking zombie in the back. Yeah, no, we're killed. Oh, my God. Uh, well, that's one less survivor. Oh, oh man. At least we got a uh, frying pan, right? <laughs> All yeah, right. Frying pan. Okay, let's go. I think we cleared the zombies. I think we should start talking about Lincoln again? Yeah, that's probably worked. <laughs> Alright. So, if you'll remember, the Lincoln conspiracy was actually to kill the first three in line for succession to the presidency, not just Lincoln himself. Secretary of State Seward had been injured in a carriage accident. He had been thrown and broke his jaw. Lewis Powell knew this, and so he knew exactly where to find him. Powell made his way to Seward's house on the same night that Lincoln was assassinated. He bluffed his way inside and passed Seward's butler with a clever ruse. Hello. Why, hello, sir. Um, I have some special medicine for Mr. Seward. Oh, very good then. May I take it to him? Oh, no, no. Uh, I need to personally deliver it. Very well. Having bluffed his way inside, Powell ascended the three flights of stairs to Seward's bedroom. He knew that Seward was in the house, but he didn't know exactly where. But before he could search, he was confronted. Hey man, I'm Seward's son, Freddy. What are you doing here, man? I got some pills for your father to take. Pills? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what pills are. You're giving me, man. I'm no, 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 I have to uh, do it personally. You're gonna mess up the vibes, man. Upon hearing okay. voices in the hall, Seward's daughter Fanny oh, opened Freddy. the door. Father's awake now. Besides. Thus revealing to Powell where exactly Seward You're was. You're gonna let me take him right now. No, man, no, I won't do it. When the gun misfired, Powell panicked and instead of firing again, beat Frederick Seward about the head with it. Powell shoved Fanny aside, ran to Seward's bed, and stabbed him repeatedly in the face and neck. The force of his blows drew Seward to the floor. Fanny's screams awakened Seward's other son, Augustus, who rushed into the room and was stabbed as well. They also brought Sergeant Robinson, who attempted to fight off Powell, and was also stabbed, but he managed to grab a gun. On seeing the gun, Powell ran off. He ran into the night, yelling, <laughs> I'm mad! I'm mad! <laughs> Powell untied his horse from a tree and rode into the night, thinking that he had been successful. In fact, Seward's jaw splint had deflected Powell's knife. It was the only thing that prevented him from being stabbed in the jugular. My father's dead! I'm not dead. Send for the police. <laughs> Call a doctor. George Atzerat's part of the plan did not go even that well. Panicked about what he was being asked to do, Atzerat hit the Washington bars. So what'll it be for you tonight, George? The usual? No, no, man. Give me something stronger. Stronger than whiskey? George, I don't know. You know what happened on the 4th of July. Yeah, I know what happened. Just, just give me something stronger. Well, I reckon a grown man can make up his own mind. No, no. Leave the jug. Alright, George. <coughs> That's some strong stuff. Yep, she packs a wallop. Just, just.
supposed to take this and have a secretary. Uh, I can't do it. Mm. Oh, my head hurt. What about the others? George Atzerat uh, never so made it to Andrew Johnson's okay. house. That didn't prevent him from being one of the four conspirators hanged for participation in the Lincoln Conspiracy. And that leaves us with John Wilkes Booth. The president was mortally wounded. Major Henry Rathbone jumped from his seat and tried to prevent Booth uh, from escaping, but Booth stabbed him violently in the arm. Rathbone quickly recovered and tried to grab Booth again as he was preparing to jump. Booth again stabbed Rathbone, then vaulted over the rail down to the stage. doctor's house. Gotta make it. Booth headed for the home of Dr. Samuel Mudd. Whether Mudd was involved in the conspiracy is still unclear, but either way, he offered Booth help and shelter. Oh my goodness gracious, now what have we here? Come in, sir, come in. Thank you. I think I broke my leg. Ah, uh, let's see what we can do about that. <laughs> Alright now, sir, this won't hurt a bit. Uh... Now you just hold still now. <laughs> Mudd's assistance of Booth completely no destroyed Mudd's reputation. Man. Afterwards, no one would have anything to do with him. This is where the weeks, expression, so your name is Mudd, right comes here. from. I gotcha. After leaving Mudd's house, Booth headed south for Virginia, stopping at several points along the way. He remained on the run for 11 more days. But that wasn't for lack of trying on the government's part. Almost immediately after the assassination, the hunt was on. Everyone Booth had been known Mr. to have contact President. with was arrested for questioning. Huge rewards were offered, and the nation in general was in an uproar. Eventually, on April 26th, 12 days after the assassination, Booth was tracked down by Union soldiers at Garrett's Tobacco Farm in Virginia. You better run! You better run! Ah! Ah! Uh, 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 uh. I'll get you again. Now you won't take me alive. Ah, my leg. This looks like a good place to hide. Take me alive! Alright, you asked for it. Ah, 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 ah. We got him, boys! Oh, no. We got him! 
Any last words? Poof. <laughs> Useless. Useless. the end of John Wilkes Booth, one of the most hated and despised men in American history. But really, was he that much worse than any other Confederate soldier? He just wanted to fight for his way of life, but because he was too honorable to break a promise to his own mother, he had to find other ways to doing it. One thing led to another, and next thing you know, he's killed the president. Goodness, we found that frying pan. Uh, that was a good find, man. So, what we're gonna do now, man? I don't know. We're down to our last waffle. What are we gonna do? Well, we can't stay here. We're gonna have to make a run for it. But where? There's a minecart. It can get us out of here. Man, that's suicide. Maybe. We'll leave in the morning. Okay. All right. Time for that suicide minecart run, I guess. Should we be bringing the guns or anything in there? I think our only chance is to travel light and fast. Just bring like one grenade. Okay. I don't know. Big, 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 big